great superhero has an origin story. And so does every great superhero studio. For Disney's Marvel Studios, its origins may be modern, but it operates more like classic Hollywood. There's never been anything quite like this in terms of getting back to a, a bona fide studio system. That's Thomas Schatz, author of this book. He says three key elements of the old studio system are very bright uh, head of production, uh, who's a hands-on producer, a regulated, carefully controlled production uh, process, and uh, intellectual property. Marvel checks all three. First, you have Kevin Feige, the president of Marvel Studios. Think of him like Nick Fury, assembling the Avengers. I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger initiative. I do think the, you know, the, the, the success of Marvel, without question, can be traced to Kevin Feige taking over production. Makes sense. It's a model of efficiency, and it's an effort to, you know, to regulate the production process in a way that, that contemporary Hollywood is fundamentally incapable of doing. Old Hollywood essentially pumped out movies on an assembly line model. Feige replicates this by breaking up the movies into phases, and he doesn't miss his deadlines. He handles the big picture plans. Look at the big picture. How can things relate across movies? As well as the minutia of each film and character. That level of control has led to a carefully crafted plan developing character and story. It all started with five solo films. By the time they all teamed up in The Avengers, people already knew and loved them. They felt invested in that story. He's a friend from work. Every single Marvel movie has debuted at number one at the box office. That's brought in $11 billion worldwide. Oh, yeah. The studios even turn films about characters you've never heard of into mega hits. Who? Well, Star-Lord, man, legendary outlaw. Guys? For Marvel, it's more about the brand than the star or even the character. Anyone else? Fans can rely on a winning formula repeated in every single movie. It's a certain mix of action, romance, drama, and laughs that the audiences love. <laughs> there's definitely a connective tissue to the Marvel movies, but there's still room for directors to explore a bit within those parameters. Compare that to its main competitor, DC Comics. Its movies haven't found that winning formula. They tend to be dark and dour. <laughs> Plus, everyone knows Superman, but they don't know this Superman. The results are increasingly worse reception from both fans and critics. We're bad guys. It's what we do. Marvel built its universe organically, layering on characters from one movie to the next, leading up to the Avengers. DC tried to skip ahead several steps, and by doing that, they perhaps inevitably stumbled. Marvel keeps its fans coming back by sprinkling in different genres into its lineup. It has done everything from political thrillers to heist films to even Kramer versus Kramer. But just like old Hollywood, these variations can stray just a bit too far from the Marvel style. For example, director Edgar Wright eventually dropped out of Ant-Man over different visions for the film. Wasn't my idea. The studio has been pushing out multiple movies a year and even multiple TV shows, but... The question becomes, you know, one of market saturation. At what point will people have had enough of this? And while Marvel has brought back the old school practice of locking in actors for long periods of time, major cast members like Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans can't take on Hydra forever. I think they need a timeout. Regardless, what Disney and Marvel Studios has done is nothing less than assemble one of the most successful superhuman studios in this or any era of Hollywood.